who was crazy until they were right all along. Ludwig Boltzmann. His equations and formulas explained the physical properties of matter, but as it went against the then accepted laws of physics, he was ridiculed and ignored for years while fighting for atom theory to be accepted. He took his own life just three years before Ernest Rutherford discovered the nucleus of an atom, proving Boltzmann's theory. Hemingway, before he took his life he became extremely paranoid the FBI was following him. His wife and people around him just thought he was mentally ill and grew deeply concerned. Hemingway went as far as getting electrotherapy at a psychiatric hospital to try and help with the perceived illusions. Turns out the FBI had been following and bugging him for years according to declassified files. In the days of landlines, my phone was tapped. I could hear a strange hollow sound and I knew someone was listening. I had had a bad accident and was home for almost a year and involved in a lawsuit. I told my attorney about it. He told me the insurance company wouldn't bother. I mentioned it to my roommate. She told me I was crazy. I began to notice a van parked on my street. It was there for several days. I thought I was under surveillance. My attorney and my roommate said I was crazy. A person came to my door asking questions about the neighborhood. They claimed to be from a real estate company. They didn't go to other houses. I thought I was being watched. My attorney and my roommate said I was crazy. Several weeks later, my roommate's boyfriend was arrested for stealing physical and intellectual property from IBM. It was the beginning of the tech era and he stole millions in hardware and software and ideas. We were being watched to see if we were involved. The phone was tapped. We were under surveillance. We were taped. I wasn't crazy after all. Quite creepy but a relief that you were correct. The dingo ate my baby lady. Got made fun of constantly. Most notably in Seinfeld and I believe went to jail because nobody believed her. Turns out a dingo ate her baby. She is still made fun of. This one was beyond fricked up. Your child is taken from you and killed by wild animals. Then you're jailed for murdering your own child and ridiculed the world over for your lame story as to what actually happened. Then, yeah, being right the whole time. In 1912 the meteorologist Alfred Wegener described what he called continental drift, an idea that culminated 50 years later in the modern theory of plate tectonics. 40. Comma Wegener expanded his theory in his 1915 book The Origin of Continents and Oceans. 41. Starting from the idea, also expressed by his forerunners, that the present continents once formed a single land mass, later called Pangae, Wegener suggested that these separated and drifted apart, likening them to icebergs of low density granite floating on a sea of denser basalt. 42. Supporting evidence for the idea came from the dove, tailing outlines of South America's east coast and Africa's west coast, and from the matching of the rock formations along these edges. Confirmation of their previous contiguous nature also came from the fossil plants Glossopterus and Gangamopterus, and the therapsid or mammal-like reptile Lystrosaurus, all widely distributed over South America, Africa, Antarctica, India, and Australia. The evidence for such an erstwhile joining of these continents was patent to field geologists working in the southern hemisphere. The South African Alex Dutois put together a mass of such information in his 1937 publication Our Wandering Continents, and went further than Wegener in recognizing the strong links between the Gondwana fragments. Comma Wegener's work was initially not widely accepted, in part due to a lack of detailed evidence. The earth might have a solid crust and mantle and a liquid core, but there seemed to be no way that portions of the crust could move around. Distinguished scientists, such as Harold Jeffries and Charles Scutchett, were outspoken critics of continental drift. Plate tectonics. My father's university dissertation was on plate tectonics. It was initially rejected by the head of the department, and this was in the early 1970s. Courtney Love was warning everyone about Harvey Weinstein back in the mid-90s, but everyone just wrote her off. If you're a woman in this industry and Weinstein invites you to one of his parties, don't go. If Courtney Love, of all people, tells you not to go to her party, you should really not go to that party. The fan that predicted the show's How I Met Your Mother message and was shamed, only to be completely right in the end. Jay Holland Bretts. 
He was a geologist that in the 1920s came up with a theory about why the dry falls and surrounding scablands of eastern Washington state were so sharp and abrupt, instead of smooth as should be with the general understanding of erosion, especially since the falls have no real river to speak of to create erosion. His theory was that a giant flood, created by an even more massive lake, ripped through the region millions of years ago, reshaping the landscape in a matter of days. He was laughed at and discredited in the geology community for almost 50 years, until someone discovered evidence in the 1950s of an ancient and massive lake that started just north of Montana that stretched all the way to southern Utah. The lake was believed to have been created by glacial dams, ice walls, during the last ice age. It would fill up over thousands of years and then hit a point where a glacial dam broke and the lake water would fire out the break like a water cannon, drain the lake, and reshape an entire region over several days as the water flowed toward the ocean. This happened several times, since the flood that carved the dry falls likely started from the Lake Missoula area in modern day Montana. It was named the Great Missoula Flood. Bretz was given an award in 1979 for his contribution to geology when he was 96 years old. He joked all my enemies are dead, so I have no one to gloat over. I'm glad he lived long enough to see his theories vindicated. I remember reading about the floods in college and it's still one of my favorite things to idly mull over. Like can you imagine if we had video of something like that? When the civil war broke out, everyone on both sides thought it would be a quick victory. However Sherman kept saying it would be a bloodbath that would drag on for years. His superiors decided he was insane and sent him out west to fight Indians, Native Americans, just to get rid of him. After it all came true and they needed some better generals, they said maybe we should bring back that Sherman guy. Martha Mitchell. She was the wife of Nixon's AG, John Mitchell. She was outspoken in the extreme and was one of the first to talk openly about what really happened re Watergate. Since she was also known to love her martinis, she was widely written off as a drunk, crazy woman. Behind the scenes, a White House doctor began heavily sedating her and her husband locked her away from the press. No one believed her until Nixon resigned and the story came out. To this day, most people only remember her as that loud mouth, Martha Mitchell. There was a great drunk history on her. Jon Snow, yes, that's his name, was laughed at for believing that the multiple cholera outbreaks could be traced back to a specific source and that it was due to contaminated water, essentially, making him one of the fathers of epidemiology. He has a fascinating life that went beyond that as well. Not only epidemiology but very rudimentary geographical information system science, GIS. He was mapping out where all the cases were most common and found the specific well that was contaminated. The Radium Girls. When Radium had just come to the US and was being marketed on dials for war and watches, girls used their lips to fix the paintbrushes to make their numbers and dials perfect. Eventually they started suffering horrible, painful experiences due to the Radium. These girls fought for years to figure out a. what was wrong with them, b. who was responsible, and c. how they were going to pay their bills support their families. It's a horrible injustice. These girls needed support and validation that they weren't crazy, that it was radium, and it took far too long and too many deaths for it to happen. Worst part is, the company knew it was bad for the girls and continued to encourage them to put brushes in their mouths. When I was in boy scout camp we had this counselor named Don. He was kind of odd. He knew everything about trees and only really talked about trees. We had just gotten back from a hike that Don was on with us and we were just sitting around talking and he suddenly goes you know, they are gonna let girls into boy scout soon. We were all like, yeah okay Don. But sure enough less than 3 years later, they did it. That's good. I was expecting Don to be a PRfile. The ex-husband of my ex-girlfriend, turns out he wasn't the crazy one after all. He kept trying to tell me and if I would have listened from the beginning I could have saved 4 years of my life. I'm so sorry man, there are always two sides of every story and unfortunately, sometimes we meet the liars first. Good riddance and I hope the new space in your life is filled by someone much more deserving of your love and affection. Michael Burry, the first guy to predict the 2008 housing market crash. 
He was a hedge fund manager for Scion Capital at the time and basically bet his entire fund's liquidity, all the money the fund had, that there would be a crash. No one believed him except a few other people who also bet against the market. Several of his clients sued him for tying their money up in what they considered to be a foolish bet or to have him be right in the end. He made his fund something like $1.30 billion and the value increased about 489%. The movie The Big Short is about him and a few other people who were wise enough to bet against the market at the time. I've watched the movie like 5 times in order to try to understand exactly what happened but still don't fully get it. I recommend it to anyone who's interested. Fun fact, Michael Burry was also ahead of the curve in the recent GameStop surge. I think he had something like 1.2 million shares of GameStop months before the price shot up. Might need to fact check myself. The classic example, of course, is Cassandra. In Greek mythology she was cursed to know the future, but for no one to believe her when she told them. The people who discovered prions. All the other biologists thought they were crazy to suggest one protein could be an infectious agent. But nope those biologists were wrong and Nobel Prizes were awarded. Me. About my, now disowned, cousin. He kept stealing things from me which my family felt was no big deal, but it escalated. It went from stealing candy, to my things, to cash, and after that I asked them how much longer they would support him and call me selfish for not sharing. The line was finally crossed when he stole our grandmother's credit cards and her car. She finally wrote him off. This was after he had stolen all of her jewelry, including the last present anniversary ring my grandfather was ever to give her. Oh, but he tried to say that our family kicked him out because he is gay. Number. None of us cared about that, it was because he is a thief. His friends have bailed him out of jail and then dropped him when he steals from them. But he claims the world is just unfair to him. Now he tells his pity story and milks the my family disowned me because I'm gay to everyone he begs from. I learned this when he tried to do it to one of my friends. Jose Canseco. He revealed that a bunch of baseball players, Mark McGuire, Rafael Palmero, ETC, were doing steroids. No one believed him for years, until everyone else got caught doing steroids. He was right but he was the worst possible messenger. Sinead O'Connor. Younger editors might not know who she is but she was a singer-songwriter from Ireland who was a staple in the alternative music scene during the late 80s and early to mid 90s who had some crossover hits. Anyway, at the height of her popularity she was the musical guest on Saturday Night Live after cancelling an earlier scheduled spot in protest against the guest host which was some dumbass stand-up comic from the 80s called Andrew Dice Clay. As Scott Thompson described him, it's as if someone took your grandmother, the one who can't speak English, and taught her to swear phonetically, gave her a special on HBO and made her a star. During her performance she sang an a cappella version of Bob Marley's War changing the lyrics to make it about child sexual abuse instead of racism. At the end of the performance she shouted something like fight the real enemy and ripped up a picture of the poop. In the following weeks people lost their crap and on the next episode of Saturday Night Live they had at least three sketches that tore her apart. A few years later the Catholic sex abuse scandal broke internationally. I think at the time she was protesting the Magdalene laundries and she was 100% right and everyone knew it. About 10 years ago there was this stoner who always hung around the shop that I played magic at. One day, he told me that he didn't trust Jared from Subway. I said that there was nothing to worry about and that the only thing that Jared did was eat sandwiches. He said that there was something really sinister about Jared, and that he could tell just by looking at him. All the magic players I know are pretty insightful tbh. That one journalist Gary Webb that uncovered the truth that the CIA aided and abetted Nicaraguan Contra rebels in funneling sea into inner city communities. And then he was blackballed and later killed himself. There is actually a book about Gary Webb, his investigation, and the aftermath called Kill the Messenger by Nick Shu. Johnny Rotten and Jerry Sadowitz both openly accused Jimmy Savile of pedophilia long before anyone took it seriously. Both basically ended up blacklisted in the UK. Corey Feldman. Dude went on national TV to tell everyone that there was a network of sexual abusers in Hollywood, and that he himself had been abused, and people laughed at him and shunned him. And then it came out that pretty much everything he was saying was true.
Barbara Walters essentially scolded him for doing it, but to me, those reactions are sort of the equivalent of those who've just completed paying massive student loans don't want the next generation to have benefits of free or reduced price schooling. With how old Barbara is, she must have gone through a shitload of sexual harassment in her early days. The people who were tortured as a part of MK Ultra. Imagine trying to convince the people around you that the government is trying to make you crazy with mind control. Only years later to find out that not only was it true, but you wouldn't get compensation for it. And you were subject to illegal human experimentation. For this one it's not really surprising that they weren't believed though. The government is controlling my mind is one of the absolute classic conspiracy theories. Congresswoman Barbara Lee was the only congressperson out of 535 members who voted no on the authorized use of military force act after the 9-11 attacks. There were also 12 present not voting recorded. In her words, it was a blank check to the president to attack anyone involved in the 11th of September events, anywhere, in any country, without regard to our nation's long-term foreign policy, economic and national security interests, and without time limit. In granting these overly broad powers, the Congress failed its responsibility to understand the dimensions of its declaration. I could not support such a grant of war making authority to the president. I believe it would put more innocent lives at risk. The president is the constitutional authority to protect the nation from further attack, and he has mobilized the armed forces to do just that. The Congress should have waited for the facts to be presented and then acted with fuller knowledge of the consequences of our action. For her vote she received death threats, a damaged political career, she was called insane, a traitor, and a communist, and she was 100% right. I also read in an interview that she set out tennis shoes to wear on the 6th of January, because she remembered how crappy running to shelter in the capital in heels on 9-11 was, and wanted to avoid that. Very astute woman. Me when nobody believed me when I said a cat broke into the house. No mother, uncle, or cousin believed me, even I questioned if I just hallucinated it. Turns out I was right when I heard my cousin screaming finding her standing on a chair while looking like she saw her life flash before her eyes. My tattoo artist, not a DT follower, who during a 6 hour session described to me what exactly would happen if Biden won but not by a landslide. I thought he was embracing a doomsday mentality, every word was correct. That's great because I hate mistakes and tattoos. John Lydon of the Sex Pistols denouncing Gimme Savile in an interview WBBC Radio in 1978, claiming that Savile was into all sorts of seediness. We all know about it but are not allowed to talk about it. I know some rumors, which were obviously just the tip of the iceberg when it came to Savile. Lydon was supposedly banned from BBC Radio for a while. And I'll throw in Bob Ebeling, even though he was considered wrong only for a short time. Ebeling was one of five booster rocket engineers at NASA contractor Morton Firecall who tried to stop the 1986 Challenger launch. They worried that cold temperatures overnight, the forecast said 18 degrees, would stiffen the rubber o-ring seals that prevent burning rocket fuel from leaking out of booster joints. He was the first to warn the morning before the launch. But politics and pressure prevailed and the Challenger launched on the 28th of January 1986, to tragic results. Suzanne Summer discovered that trees not only communicate with each other but will lend a tree and distress resources. People thought that was crazy talk for a long time. Doubt anyone sees this but frick it, learned recently my grandpa was right all along. My grandpa was a dentist, he mentored my current dentist. Saw my dentist the other day and he was going on and on about how my grandpa was doing things 40 years ago that he was mocked for endlessly by the dental community and told he was crazy. Those things he was doing are now being seen as modern dentistry today. My dentist said he feels so happy for my grandpa and wishes he was alive to see this. Would love examples. Every woman with endometriosis. Yeah you win. Six doctors. Two years. And I'm one of the lucky ones. Barbara McClintlock, after being accepted in the scientific community as a woman in the 40s, which was quite a feat, she was invited to the National Academy of Sciences which was a huge deal. After that, she discovered transposons, pieces of DNA that move around your genome, very simplified, 
Everyone thought she was crazy and she was ostracized from the scientific community. Despite having mountains of evidence and continued research, people just didn't believe her. And talking about her reaction at the time, I was startled when I found they didn't understand it, didn't take it seriously. It didn't bother me. I just knew I was right. Anybody who had had that evidence thrown at them with such abandon couldn't help but come to the conclusions I did about it. She essentially said they were all fake AF and returned to her cornfields until around the 70s when it became possible. They marked genes and found that they do indeed travel around the genome. She then got her Nobel Prize and was like 8 back to work. She said at the time you just know sooner or later, it will come out in the wash, but you may have to wait some time. She died sometime in the 90s, saying of her experience, I just have been so interested in what I was doing and it's been such a pleasure, such a deep pleasure, that I never thought of stopping. I've had a very, very, satisfying and interesting life. She never got too upset. She just kept her head down and kept doing her work because she knew it was right and she knew it was important. This doesn't even begin to talk about all the discrimination she faced, but suffice it to say that she had a powerful impact on genetics and she's now one of my role models in my own research. Known serial abuser on YouTube Anishan had long accused Shane Dawson of being inappropriate with children. Obviously he was not listened to because he himself married a 17 year old and continued to groom other girls with his husband. He eventually recanted his statement and apologized but a few years after that it turned out Dawson had done a lot of inappropriate things towards children and sexualized them frequently at which point Anishan said see I was right all along. Crazy stuff. My wife who never liked my mom's husband. He apparently made a pass at her before we were married and I just wrote it off as Bob being Bob because it was honestly semi-innocent and at the time he and my mom were newlyweds. But over the years we started finding out he was hitting my mother. He fondled my sister. He was constantly cheating on my mom. He got caught trying to take an upskirt picture of my friend's underage sister. And he punched my mom in the head outside in the ice causing her to hit her head on the pavement fracturing her skull and causing an almost fatal brain hemorrhage. She needed two brain surgeries and now deals with balance issues and almost complete loss of taste and smell and hearing in one ear. He has never faced any consequences for anything because for reasons I can't quite understand local law enforcement in their podunk town takes his side every time she calls the cops on him. One time they even took her to jail because his drunk butt fell in the walk-in pantry while they were having an argument and he called the cops and said she beat him up. He's literally twice her size. This is terrible. One of our DND party members was hiding in a tree when the rest of the party was trying to negotiate and we got captured except the one in a tree. My party, let's accept this invite to go talk to Xanatha in his private office. My character, hard pass, enjoy the mind worms. Nikki Lauda predicting Lewis Hamilton's transfer from McLaren to Mercedes F1 will be a good decision. Ended up winning 6 championships in Mercedes alone. And counting. I kept telling people that Apple deliberately sabotages their phones to stop working over time via their updates. And that it doesn't matter if you reject the update, it'll happen anyway. Lo and behold, Apple was caught out using planned obsolescence via updates to sabotage their own phones to twist its customers' arms into buying a new one. They said I was being paranoid. Well who's paranoid now Laura? WHO's paranoid now? Working at a psychiatric hospital I once heard about a guy claiming he was a secret agent on a covert mission to stop a potential terrorist attack. He didn't elaborate any more than that and they thought he was psychotic. Loaded him with antipsychotics, basically turning him into a zombie. About a week later a bunch of black suits come in, flashing their badges, says his story checks out and took him with them. The famous Swift quote applies, when a true genius appears in the world, you may know him by this sign, that the dunces are all in confederacy against him. Taylor Swift does have some great lyrics. My dad. He was a UK policeman in the 80s and 90s. He would rant for hours about Asian pedophile gangs and it's all being covered up because nobody wants to deal with it. And I mostly assumed he was just being racist. Dang must have really sucked for him if even his own son daughter wouldn't take him serious. Must have really felt like a the only sane man in an insane world kinda deal. Not to blame you or anything. I don't know the circumstances, but just from his perspective, that's gotta be rough. 
Winston Churchill. He was very much out of favor at the time that he began warning about German rearmament. In the first volume of his retrospective on the Second World War, he is emphatic that it was history's most unnecessary and preventable war. In my mind, the willingness to appease Hitler as long as it meant having at least some chance to avoid another war, speaks volumes about how horrifyingly traumatizing World War I must have been for everyone involved. Me. Developed severe chronic pain at the age of 14 and after all the medical tests were negative my doctors convinced everyone that the symptoms were psychosomatic, the pain is real but caused by a mental illness rather than physical problem. They said that my depression was causing my pain but if I was depressed it was only months after my pain already started when I began to realize it was never going to go away. Then 4 years later in 2014 I was diagnosed with my actual problem. Ehlers Downless Syndrome and people stopped thinking I was crazy and started treating me with respect for doing my best to survive what I go through. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.